friend on Facebook who had a birthday party for her dog. You know, I mean, it's that's her fur baby, as she calls it. Yeah. So. Well, uh, you know, uh, Tina, Tina Furlow, she talked with me about this last week, and um, I missed talking to her this morning, but it was pure chaos in, in my life this morning. I was going crazy uh, doing this and that and putting out fires. But anyway, I, I missed talking to you this morning, sis. But last week, you know, she just let me ramble. And, you know, she was so, she sent me a card, you know, because my cat died. I thought that was so sweet. And, um, but the lady that we had on our show that helps out at the uh, Northwest Florida Wildlife Sanctuary, Beverly Julian, yeah. she actually um, asked me about my cat. I guess um, Dr. Jones spoke to her about it. And uh, maybe he was trying to solicit some help of why I'm acting crazy and <laughs> sad. <laughs> but she, I didn't tell her about it, so, but she knew. But um, this morning she said, you know, it's like a part of your family. You know, for eight years, Coco has been in our household, and, you know, just like it's not just like a kid. I don't want to put those together, you know, because it's not humans, humans, animals, animals. But to me, you know, I fed her and watered her and took care of her, and just you talk to them like they're crazy, like I'm crazy, and like they're crazy, and then you watch them get sick and suffer and then die right in front of you. You know, it's... It was hard, and I, I uh, <laughs> but anyway, she said, you know, they don't judge you. They don't, they've never said anything bad about you. You know, they just have these qualities of almost a perfect human, except for being human and having, you know, more of a, a conscious and an emotional state. Right. But they have all these attributes um, that we're looking for, you know, in, in each other, you know, non judgmental and, you know, seems like they're there. Yeah, they're present. <laughs> and um, they respond to you, uh, your care. And so, but I have people in my life that are, are non judgmental and, you know, respond to my care and everything. But I don't know. I just, but she made me feel too, as Tina did and, and you, that I don't have to feel crazy for still mourning her and missing her, you know. As long as you don't have her in the freezer, we're all okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. I'm not gonna say anything else about that, but um, <laughs> no. Uh, and you called her a she because we called her a he she sometimes because we couldn't. It looked like she was both in some respects. Um, hmm. I know Sigmund Freud would probably have a field day with my brain, but I'm thank thank God he's dead. <laughs> As my aunt would say, "Let the dead be dead, and be glad they're dead." Um, anywho, we're moving on. I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that. I'm a little on the crazy side, and I miss my kitty cat, Co. And my husband doesn't help because he'll sing me the song he always sang to her. He'll sing me that song sometimes, and um, it makes me sadder, I think, instead of helping me. Yeah. Anywho, anywho. Um, hey, now, I'm thinking we brought this to y'all first, what we're getting ready to talk about, and I want y'all to acknowledge it, too. The zombie invasion is back in the news. Monica, do you have anything on that? I mean... People, we talked to you probably for about a month about this <laughs> coming zombie invasion, and now the government, United States government, the Marines, Semper Fi and all that, they have gotten on board and want to prepare people for this zombie invasion. We brought it to them first. Right. It was breaking news when we brought it to them. Yep. And they, like the CDC, have gotten involved and are preparing for a zombie invasion. Of Tongue-in-cheek, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the CDC said, you know, if you were going to prepare for a zombie invasion, and they never came out and said whether they believe zombies were real or not, but they said, you know, if you're going to prepare for the imminent zombie, inv zombie invasion that's coming, then you'll be prepared for just about any natural disaster, uh, pandemic, um, yeah. earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis, that type thing, um, terrorist attacks, you'll just really be prepared. And if somebody wanna wants to have like a, the label of it a zombie invasion as the marines are doing and the police it says um then what's the harm in it it's very you know tongue-in-cheek like we said but it's um you know one of those things uh the article states that it's a very real exercise um it's not a big costume party mm -hmm. it is a um it will be um hosting it on october 31st 
It's a training dem- demonstration at a 44-acre uh, summit wow. um, out in California. And it said everything will be that, that will be simulated has already happened. It just hasn't happened all at once. Now, they're not saying an actual zombie invasion, but they made the claim that, you know, if you stick a gun out and you say freeze to someone, a terrorist, you may not know how that terrorist is going to react. Well, first of all, let me clarify that. If I stuck my gun out to a terrorist, I wouldn't say freeze. Honestly, who says freeze and let, well, them, let them get the first shot off? Probably. I mean, hopefully, point I, there. hopefully I wouldn't be in that position because I don't want to shoot anybody. You know, I don't. And I believe... We're, we're all the same in, in this world, but honestly, if it's between me and them, I'm sorry. Y'all watch out. <laughs> My busted <of> cap. <laughs> but, but they're saying, you know, that it's a very real, you know, thing. You just don't know what you're preparing for exactly. I mean, you're sense. as prepared as you can be for a situation to arise. Yeah. And that's what they're saying is really the point is that, you know, if you are preparing some people believing that there's a zombie apocalypse coming, that you're going to be prepared for something such as a hurricane. Because a lot of the, I think there's 33 rules that were introduced and were kind of like a takeaway from the movie Zombie Land that came out years ago. Um, but it, they said that, you know, a lot of these rules are just common sense disaster preparedness. And isn't it sad that the common sense part of it, most of us don't have. And so we have to, you know, um, brief people on common sense nowadays. Yeah. It's, and have to label it zombie invasion. To I know, get them so to they'll prepare. pay attention to it. <laughs> um, but it says hundreds of military and law enforcement and medical professional will observe the Hollywood style production of a zombie attack as part of their emergency response training. And um, it said that another good point about doing it like this is, you know, if you say a terrorist, you know, a lot of people, you know, after 9-11 and stuff, there was a lot of uh, just anybody you saw who looked to be of, um, you know, an Arab sure. descent was categorized as possible terrorist. And, you know, I'm sure some of that's still going on today. You read stuff in the news all the time. Um, but they said this kind of helps prevent that because the zombies could be anybody from any nationality oh, and you know and, nice. and it's not putting a a race or a culture yes um or an ethnic group of people on the spot and labeling them as causing the attack it's the zombies so right yeah you know, that was kind of another good point but they're they're having fun with it to the degree of you know they're like i said it's a little tongue-in-cheek it's just well can we watch this is it going to be broadcast or i i, I bet it would be certainly Excuse I'm sure that there's, there might be some things that would come about. Um, but the Homeland Security Department jumped on board last m- month, and they told citizens that if you're prepared for a zombie attack, you'll be ready for any real-life disasters, pandemics, you name it. Well, you know what? So. We're going to be prepared, too. But I do want you all to know, we talked about this a long time ago, and so yes. we kind of gave you the, the one leg up on everybody. So if a zombie comes in your neighborhood and you get caught, you have no one to blame but yourself. And on the note of being prepared for disasters right now, we, we need to all pray yes. for the people on the East Coast, and, and really not even the East Coast, because from what I was reading, they're suspecting that or, you know, estimating that upwards of maybe a third of the country will be affected My goodness. by this superstorm that's out there. Frankenstorm, I've heard it called. Yes. Superstorm, Megastorm, uh, Sandy by the name, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. is out there and Same. just... Uh, <laughs> Um, out there and it's just you know it's massive when I I didn't even know anything about it saw my aunt had posted something on Facebook about sorry all you east coasters because last year they called her the snow witch (laughs) because she's from California she grew up in Maine lives in California and I was actually in or on my way to California this time last or Maine Maine last year for my aunt's funeral and um the other aunt, being home in Maine, did a snow dance, and it snowed on October 31st, which was one of the earliest snowfalls they'd ever had, and it was a major snowfall, mm. um, and it affected several states, and uh, she said, I didn't order this one up, yeah, No, and I think they dangerous. will still try and blame this on her, though, because there will. will be snow effect from it in there some areas, be. from yeah. what they're saying. So. You know, uh, we have a lot of friends, um, many 
for many reasons. We have a lot of friends in different areas and uh, right. whatnot. And so we just want to uh, let you know we're thinking about you and for sure. Um, and if you haven't already gone and got your supplies you need for being without power for days right. or longer, water and all the food and stocking up, you probably should go do it because um, from what I understand, the effects of everything are going to really start happening today and then you know deteriorate quickly as yes. we all know with hurricanes in this area that's true it happens quick you know We're, we've, we've been um we dodged the bullet this year so i just uh think about everybody else and our thoughts and prayers are with you um okay hey uh last week our show might have been a little i don't know uncomfortable or weird for some people i don't know we, we thought well to bring up a situation could go one way or the other um situation with someone um tagging us for some reason and trying to you know put a black mark on us um you know you don't have to make up stuff to put a black mark on us you just tell the truth joke um <laughs> so <laughs> but people actually like the show and they said it, it really made them think about some things right mom yeah i mean i had a conversation from with several people uh, one of which was tina from the texas studio <laughs> Um, who did have some encounters with the gentleman that we talked about on our show that had originally wrote the post. And, um, you know, she just said beyond just the actual content of what he said, just the fact that there's something out there or somebody out there that you hear something about, um, not knowing all the facts and not knowing all the situation. It's so easy to just jump on this you know, bandwagon or jump on this sure. thing and say, oh, you know, this person, you know, they said this about this group and, and believe it hook, line and sinker. And she said, you know, it really just, it kind of reminds you to give pause when you hear things in the media or you hear things that people put on the internet or different yes. things, or just even like right. a common conversation with somebody. That's true. There's two sides to a story. And, you know, just because you hear one side of it, you know, you really should kind of pause before you make a judgment or unfriend somebody or cast somebody off, you know, based on something you hear because, you know, yes. you weren't there. And, um, and you know, she mentioned that, but there were several people that mentioned the show was just a, a really good show that they thought it was um, good that we did it, yeah. you know, and well, not just for the reason to say, hey, you know, here's the truth about the situation, right. but the whole our thought process behind it. You know, yes, we wanted to set the record straight, but sure. we wanted to also just really kind of bring it out to people that, you know, don't, don't be so believe. quick to judge yes. and believe something and cast, uh, your, your, you know, your vote on who somebody is or what an organization is about without really giving them like Bob says their 15 minutes. Yes. I think that forward. that's, um, a fantastic thing, you know, um, give somebody 15 minutes and uh, think about what they said, what it could possibly be. And I get something for you. Call them up and ask. You know, don't just take uh, something for granted. Um, if you really want to know if it's that important to you, call somebody and ask. And somebody actually did call um, Dad, uh, Doctor Jones, my husband, um, Dad. Right. <laughs> but they they did call Dad. I think it was Sunday night or Monday night, and. Uh, um, a couple people did and wanted to know. I'm not saying they watched our show. I, I don't think that they did. But they saw it on Facebook. And they actually asked him specifically, hey, what's going on? Why would somebody, um, number one, why would somebody that, you know, used to be your friend on Facebook, why would they want to put something out there that's, you know, erroneous? You know, is it true? What, what's this about? And Dr. Jones you know, let them know. And uh, so I admire that. If you really want to know, instead of just taking it with a grain of salt, ask, you know, be yeah. glad to say. And I think that's another thing we're trying to say is, it's really twofold, is that people will hurt you in life and they will disappoint you. Um, still love them. You know, I think we're called to love regardless. Um Regardless, regardless of anything uh, somebody does to us, we're still called to love that person. Right. And I think it's a good practice. Um, it's easy to love people when they are telling you what you want to hear and they are being nice and sweet to you. And, you know, they're easily trusting, um, easy to trust, I should say. But we come into 
uh, the real dilemma in life is when we are surrounded by people or come across a person that now they do something to hurt you or do something on purpose to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know, we all hurt each other accidentally. That's a given. But when you, you know, set out to hurt somebody on purpose, wow, that's, that's harsh, you know, and I need to love that person. Right. And, you know, I brought that up last week, um, and I'm not bragging on myself or us so much as that, you know, it is a growing process and it is a maturing process. And that's one reason why we keep saying, come grow up with us, because none of us are saying, hey, we've reached this level that, you know, we're here and we've ascertained to never getting angry with anybody. Oh, I'll be the first one to tell you I get angry. Am I proud of that? No. <laughs> you know, I wish I was where, you know, Christ was and where he didn't get angered when they were beating him and he could just look at them and simply understand that they didn't know what they were doing and love them. I hope I get there one day. And I think, you know, I'll get closer and closer to it. The more I do have people in my life that hold me accountable and say, no, you know, let's not have a knee jerk reaction here. Let's not land by somebody because we've been hurt. Um, you know, and an incident happened just real recently. Mm hmm where somebody needed a little correction in a situation. Um, and I kind of felt bad about maybe why, the way I handled it. I don't think I was awful. I think maybe I was maybe a little harsher than I should be. But I think the, the key is, is to not act in anger, you know. Um, and and that's, the, that's the main thing, especially with, like, raising kids and, and your relationships with people. When you react in anger, there's nothing that ever comes out of that that's, that's good. And so it's kind of a twofold lesson. You know, don't judge somebody immediately. Right. Don't be quick to assume that one side of what you hear is, is what that is. You know, find out the facts. Ask the person directly. But also, you know, when you're the one that's been hurt or you're the one that's been talked about or you're the one that's been done wrong – Finding a way to, to rise above letting that anger control you. Because anger is an emotion, a human emotion that we all have. But uh, it, is it a great thing that we have it? No, but we do have it. And it's learning how when we get angry to let it go real quick. And even if we don't let it go real quick, growing up to that point. Right. But until you're there, not reacting. That's, so. a, that's a very good point is um, right now we have it. And so... You know, today, excuse me, today I might get angry, um, you know, immediately and hold on to it for, you know, two or three minutes. But tomorrow I want to strive where if I get angry, it's just a minute and then it's 30 seconds. And then pretty soon I won't get angry at all. But honestly, I think it's like riding a bicycle or, or um, actually twirling a baton. I took baton lessons when I was um, much younger and... I had to practice it every single day. And I mean, for hours and hours and hours. And my mother, she would, would come out there and I would get aggravated, but I knew I had to do it. And she would say, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. You need to do it. And, and she wasn't mean about it, but it still bothered me, you know, and I would sit there and then I'd get up and start again. I would just, but, and that's how it is about this. We have to practice this, not getting angry. Right. You know, and it, it sounds sad that we have to practice that, but we do. We, we just have to. Like you said, it's a human emotion. It is a human emotion. And then so many people in the world are of the mindset that, oh, there's nothing wrong with being angry. But I've, I've heard the saying so many times, anger is just one step away from danger, you know? And yeah. it really is true. If you get angry and you start throwing crap or you start you know, throwing <laughs> wow. punches or whatever the case may be, I mean, someone's going to get hurt, you know? If you go tearing off on a motorcycle or in your car and you're angry, you're liable to make a, a bad judgment call with running a stoplight or who knows what. I mean, when we act out of anger, it doesn't end well. Yes, that's know? right. Oh, I like that. Um, danger, anger. Mm -hmm. So, But, I mean, it is. And, and like I said, you just have, you have so many influences out there that tell you, oh, it's, it's natural and oh, it's yeah. okay. There's nothing wrong with being angry. But... You know, you know what they say? Oh, even Jesus got angry and he took the whip out to the people in the temple and the money changers and so people Jesus did not get angry. Ang ang anger is not positive. I right. mean, well, no way. 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it somewhere in scripture where it talks about, you know, putting, you know, ne- never going to bed where on your anger, never letting the sun go down in your anger mm-hmm. and put a, put this aside. And uh, it even talks about the characteristics of the flesh and anger and wrath. And those things are listed in there. Well, the characteristics of the flesh, what I've always understood is those are sinful. Right. And so anger, strife, malice, you know, a bunch of stuff. God's without sin, but he's angry. And mm-hmm. that's listed over here in the same document that's supposed to say he's without sin. And he's, you know, yeah. I don't think so there's so. kind of a contradiction there, and and um, I think that believing that because he took out the whip and he brought correction, if that story is even 100 percent right, valid, valid yeah. story, um, saying that that's God or Jesus or however you want to term him, <laughs> God angry, is one of those things where just like the Noah story, where oh it's been told to us and we believe it hook line and sinker, we don't ask any questions, we don't put two and two together. The scripture over here that says this, or this part of the Bible yes. says this, and this part says this, and how do those fit together? Well, well, they don't. They don't. You can force the piece in there, but that reminds me. I was looking through a a catalog um, this week, and I while well, I was reading in a it's a, a Southern Baptist um, magazine, and I was reading several articles about things, and then I saw some advertisements for different books and stuff, and um. One of them was the toddler Bible, and it was the most vivid, beautiful blue color on the background. And on the front page of the Bible was a um, picture of the ark and all these cartoon animals sticking their little smiling heads out. And Noah with the long white beard and his old lady, they were like smiling and um, all excited, you know, waving. And that was on the cover of the toddler Bible. But, you know... <laughs> we all know how the story ended. Um, but how you, many of us glossed over that for years? Right. You know? That's my point. Who who told the toddler that God, you know, um, let's just say he couldn't stand the people anymore. He repented that he made them. Yeah. He, he was, changed his mind yeah. that he made them. And he just wiped them out. And um, for whatever reason, eight were chosen and he wiped out animals too because all, all the animals couldn't have gone on no so it wiped out so much of death and destruction and this is why i don't understand if all that's true i mean it would have been really stinky you know what i'm saying when yeah. the water subsided you have all these bloated dead bodies or whatever i don't know Did, am i missing something i don't know no how they got rid of and those. and you know a lot of people that are animal activists would say well you know god's going to kill all these animals and it wasn't the animals that were screwing right. up and doing wrong and sinning was it <laughs> well, that's true you know it was the people right <laughs> so yeah you know a uh, toddler bible mo it was on it and i know they have little books that have all these little stories in it but you know, honestly, they're not being honest with these kids. If you're going to put I've that in a toddler those Bible. books and not, not on the shelf that my kid can get to anymore. I As know, I Mo. see them and come across them, I kind of weed them out. Well, as my dad says, put it in Big Green Monster. He calls those big garbage cans the Big Green Monster. So <laughs> that's where they need to go. I don't know if you can recycle something like that. But I would even hate to take them to Goodwill or the Waterfront Rescue Mission for them to sell in their um, store because somebody else will pick up on it. And, you know, but, you know, we won't tell the children the whole story. It's just, oh, God was so nice, and he saved all these people. You know, people don't get us wrong if you don't know us, and you're just tuning into this show for the first time. We very much believe God is a good God. Oh, yeah. And that he's very nice, all nice, and all good, and very loving. But that doesn't jive with what you've been told for centuries um, concerning what you read in the Old Testament, you know, in the story of Noah and the ark. So, you know... Be careful not to judge us too quick if you just turned your channel on YouTube or just found it, came across our feed. And hopefully uh, at the beginning of the show, you kind of picked up on not judging people real quick. Because, <laughs> like I said, there are plenty of things to dog us about that are true instead of uh, made up things. So, anywho. Um, Halloween. Halloween. Some people are afraid of Halloween. And I'm going to say this right off the bat. Um, my brother loves Halloween. Oh my goodness. He loves Halloween, but his wife, my sister-in-law, she like, honest to goodness, she won't participate in Halloween. She, you know, it's so the devil and it's all this other stuff. 
And well, uh, that's how most people uh, in the church world are, are raised. Um, you really? Know, no, come on. Oh, well, no, I'm, no. Mo, mo, let, let's. It's getting to be that way. I mean, they've uh, a lot of them have quit having you know Halloween um, even in schools nowadays, just to not offend people. They don't call it Halloween parties anymore. They call That's it a true. fall festival. That's true. Um, That's true. And I can remember 10, 15 years ago or so when I was helping run fall festivals yep. and stuff that you did. You just didn't want to offend certain groups of people, so you didn't call it Halloween, you know? Uh, okay, I understand that, and you got me on that one. You do. But... I know whenever I was in a, a youth department in a Baptist Southern Baptist church when I was growing up, I mean, there was this really old-looking, crazy haunted house-looking uh, house. And uh, we had a, a real true haunted house, and we, like, buried people on the ground. We had a casket from the funeral home. I mean, we just had a ball. And, yeah. you know, we turned out halfway decent. I mean, I don't think it's... You know, what's the, yeah, what's, and you know, my sister brought up a point many, many years ago, and I think it was probably when I was involved with that, you know, other church <laughs> and stuff years ago, and and um, was doing the fall festival. She is like, you know, so many people want to get away from doing Halloween, and she said, you know, it's a day for kids to play dress up, use their imagination, and have fun. It's people that want to read too much into it. Mm-hmm. Or it's people that want to take advantage of it and, you know, commercialize it and, and um, call it, you know, a pagan holiday and stuff. But, you know, if you go on back to, you know, other things, I mean, Christmas is very commercialized. And Christmas has become, you know, they call it 100% the day that Jesus was born when we know that that wasn't technically when he was born. True. You know, um, that's when we celebrate. And, and so there's a lot of things that, you know, and of course there was this big thing a few years ago when you saw Xmas, people got all offended by that and oh, I know was it. taking Christ out of Christmas. And, and that's not even true. It, that's right. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, it, it's one of those things again, where you're just so easy to jump on yes. a bandwagon and believe it and do it. And well, I want to ask you, um, what you're going to be for Halloween this year. I haven't worked on me yet because I'm normally working on the kids, but I have a good old standby that I've used for years, and it's really simple. You could probably do it, too. Okay. I used to work at Applebee's, and years ago, I couldn't come up with a Halloween costume, so I had a bathrobe, Mm -hmm. and I went to the dollar store and found me some um, shower caps, (laughs) Bar to Friends curlers. I painted my face white with, uh, look like, well, at the time, I think I used Noxzema because I didn't have anything else, (laughs) and I wore slippers, and... um, like had pantyhose and what put one up high and oh, one rolled down to my ankle and carried a little old bag with candy and my pad to take orders with. There were some parents who actually would not let me near their children. Really? <laughs> and uh, it was really fun that year because everybody dressed up and they had this one girl there who uh, she looked like uh, one of the hot pink ladies or whatever from the movie Grease. Oh, yeah. And she had the scarf around her neck and the hot pants on, you know, real tight and skin tight and fit to you and show you all your curves. But she got a lot of tips that night, didn't she? She probably did. <laughs> but one of the managers oh, used to rascal. say, this is what you married. And then he pointed at me and said, this is what you wake up with 10 years later. Of course, that was a very awful comment. But, you know, <gasps> it was fun and we had a good time with it. So <laughs> It's true. I can't get mad at something that's true. I told you all that. If it's true, I can't get mad at it. But yeah. that's true. <laughs> case in point <laughs> but but you know dressing up can be a lot of fun i mean uh, i've had a number of costumes over the year where i was talking to this lady the other day about costumes and um some places just don't do it anymore um but i know at the bank a few years back when i worked there we had a um like a theme we did a pumpkin patch and I was a carrot do you remember that I do when I had the big orange Not... suit on and the green hair on the top of my head yeah I had the really long curly blonde hair and I, I remember it green all that on the top of my head yeah that was not one of my finest moments but it was fun <laughs> okay well we have a viewer comment oh we do comment gobbler <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> I mean that's I mean, it's really funny. I'm sorry, viewer, but I had to have a little fun with it because at 4 o'clock there was a show called T-Bog, The Beginnings of Greatness. Manus. And uh, Matt's the comment gobbler. They won't take comments on their show. They're, they don't want to be... But, you know, we do. Thank you for commenting. Yes, And I you. will um, read this. 
out loud even. It says, it's okay to get angry because emotion starts us on a growing thinking process. It is how the anger is used that matters. Well, we'd like to thank you for your comment and your uh, opinion about this. And it's something to think about, obviously. Uh, It's okay to get angry. Now, I will say this. What if, what if I rise above it and I, I don't have to get angry anymore? And I'm, you know, to me, it would be okay Uh, never to get angry too but I can see what the viewer is trying to say you know anger uh, in their opinion says look uh, it's an emotion and so I feel this now I need to say how do I control it or how do I use it for something positive right you know and uh, so uh, I appreciate that my my thought too is I, I don't ever want to be angry and right now I do get angry sometimes and I do want to use that to grow up with but to me growing up would mean I would never get angry again you know yeah I I think that we can strive to get to a place to where you know frustration Matt being mad or being angry you know a lot of people can say it's really close to one another but um not reaching the point of where you're angry because to me anger borders on losing out of control control, you know and um maybe it's not the same with everybody but um sure i think that when you allow yourself to get to that point it's just real easy to to step across the line and i do agree with the point that any mistake we make or any um emotion that we feel we have the responsibility of how we act on it, you know, where we go from there. And, you know, we're going to, you know, as humans feel emotions. And one of those is anger. Right. But I think that we can attain to keep striving to rise above it. Um, Because when you allow yourself to get angry, um, most people don't have an on off switch with, their reactions right you know it doesn't it's not doesn't stay at a little simmer you know it and and this is i think an an individual obviously an individual thing because you know if i'm gonna go to the trouble of getting angry i'm gonna be full blown you know what i'm saying if i'm gonna go to the trouble of being angry and i can't Mm -hmm. i'm because you can let yourself keep feeling it keep feeling it keep feeling it and then go crazy right and a lot of people will stuff emotions you know like sadness or or anger or disappointments frustrations and to the point where one person does something um says something and then it's like you erupt on that person like a volcano that's been dormant for years because you've stuffed all these things rather than learning how to work through them yeah well maybe that's what the viewer was saying you know uh, if you feel it, don't stuff it, just deal with it, you know, and then, and I, I agree with that, but I, I have to say one of these days, I would hope that we don't want to be angry anymore. And we would grow up to, you know, check our emotions and say, I don't have to be that way anymore because you know what, I'm going to let things roll off my back. And for the most part, my uncle would say this, he would, you know, if he was going through a situation he would say, you know, what are they going to do to you? Chop you up in little pieces and eat you? You know, <laughs> th- that's the worst thing somebody could do, you know, is, and that, and so now I, I say that, you know, and I don't really have hardly any fears at all. Like, what can they do to me down at the bank? <laughs> chop me up in little pieces and eat me? No, I can handle this. You know, I'm going to get through it. And I'm going to survive to live to fight another day. And, um, uh, so anyway, thank you so much for the comment. I really appreciate We do appreciate your comments, and we, we will take them here. That's right. We don't have... We won't gobble them up for real. I mean, honestly, at this show at 4 o'clock called T-Bog, they gobble their comments up. When a viewer has a legitimate comment, and they'll say, who is this person trying to tell me a comment? And they say, gobble this comment up. <laughs> and Matt goes, gobble, gobble, gobble. This is the audacity of people on T-Bog audacity Mm -hmm. and they also call our production crew they call them crew member like they're insignificant Mm -hmm. but this is really being (laughs) funny but it's to me it's funny yeah and now listen at three o'clock if you have any spanish-speaking friends that um 
Of course, it looks like to me if you had Spanish-speaking friends, you would know Spanish more than likely. Possibly. Because how can you really be friends if you don't know, you know, how could you communicate? Well, I've got some friends that know Spanish, but I don't know. Spanish-speaking. Yeah, well, solely Spanish-speaking. Solish, solely Spanish-speaking. But if you do, anyway, I have to think about that one. Anyway, if you know of somebody that <laughs> speaks Spanish solely, um, make sure they tune in on the same channel, obviously, at 3 p.m. because William Torres um, delivers fantastic information, a great teaching in Spanish for people that, you know, aren't as savvy in the English language as, as we are. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm not as savvy in Spanish. French, Chinese, German. Uh, I, I, you know, Dutch. I took French in high school. I took it uh, two years, and I actually, I don't know how I made it into the French Honor Society, but now that I think about it, I need to investigate that. But, um, but I did. Wow. Um, I took French as well for two years, and the second year I don't remember anything that I learned. <laughs> but the first year I remember very little. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can read French and know some of it, but and I can pronounce some of it now yeah. still but i couldn't really carry on a good conversation with somebody in french i don't think i, I can recognize a few words <laughs> <laughs> and there's a song i learned in french it's a christmas song but uh you know i don't remember it right now don't no. ask me to sing it if I you were saw gonna that sing, look in your eye <laughs> I, I was gonna say if you were gonna start way out with frere jacques i was gonna just get up and walk away <laughs> no <laughs> but where i was going somewhere with this uh foreign language stuff but it's fascinating um Oh, yeah, this is where I was going to go with that. You know, um, I'm a lazy speaker. I mean, I, I slur my words. I, I mispronounce things. I uh, speak with a southern accent. Not that that's bad. But, you know, I, but I don't care. That's the sad thing. I think I should care. I think I should be a little bit more refined, but I don't want to be. I mean, because sometimes when I hear somebody trying to really you know, speak properly and try to, you know, I start laughing at them. And, and so I understand why they would laugh at me because it sounds funny, <laughs> but to me it's the opposite. So if you're laughing at me, don't ever hesitate to think I'm not laughing at you <laughs> trying well, to be right. <laughs> when I was in Maine last year, um, you know, all those, uh, all the people that were up there that I was around pretty much was family or really close family friends and some I'd met years ago and some I'd never met. But they all have the northern accent. And, of course, I probably sounded like a crazy person to them. <laughs> probably. Um, but I have to laugh because my husband teases me. Um, when I get around my family at family reunions here in the south, he's like, oh, your southern's coming. <laughs> yeah. Redneck or whatever he oh, says. Because <laughs> it's like, it, I guess it's more pronounced or I'm hearing it more and maybe it causes me to, yes. to it, speak more like that. I, I know. know. So I think you might be a bad influence on me. I might have to get another co-host that speaks Properly in, better, in, a, in a better, better accent, so I won't be Not sloppy. Not so southern, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. My mother and father are both from Virginia as well as I am. But um, they, my mama speaks like, she'll say coach and oat side. And it's just really, you know, uh, pronounced. And when we go to Virginia and she gets with her sister, my aunt, they're just like in this crazy world. You know, just it sounds weird but anything that um you know we mock what we don't understand or what we can't explain or what we are not familiar with and so uh mm -hmm. i'm really just doing a lot of joking about um not really because i still laugh at people that really try to you know speak in a way that they normally don't but they're just trying to look good i do yeah. i do still laugh at people like that and I do. I want to ask you. I need your help. I don't want to laugh at anybody for anything that they do. But well, but you can laugh fun. at me. I don't it's care. A good, good medicine. Laughter is a good medicine. And and that that brings me to a point. You know, sometimes we can take things a little too seriously and um, yes, you know, be offended by something that's it's not meant to be an offense. Um, you know, we need to learn to laugh at ourselves and. Um, don't laugh at somebody just to hurt, you know, I right. mean, when it's uh, causing hurt to them, you right. know. But uh, laughing at somebody who misspeaks or, I mean, I misspeak all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Black bag, white bag, baby. You know what that means. My husband. <laughs> um, ponies, horses. Anyways, we won't go there now. Um, 
but you know, I mean, just there's things you say, learn to laugh at yourself, learn to have fun. Sure. And, um, when other people are being funny or cracking a joke and, and doing stuff, um, I think we need to learn how to take it and not let it offend our sensibilities, whether it be, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know really how to word exactly what you I'm saying. You just want to use the word sensibilities because that really yeah, sounds, so it sounds professional. Yeah. And I'm going to start laughing that, at that's you now. That's what it was. <laughs> All right. We have two minutes left. Oh, we have a comment from uh, a person. And Michelle, never getting angry is being indifferent to evil and injustice. It means that one just doesn't care, is not human. It means that one is unconcerned for their fellow human beings. Anger motivates one to oppose evil and injustice. Well, Michelle, I do thank you for your opinion. And we do thank you for um, tuning in, obviously. Uh, Never getting angry is being indifferent to evil and injustice. But see, God wasn't angry. I mean, Jesus wasn't angry. And he, he wasn't at all indifferent. You know, um, like we brought up before, if you look at what we call scripture, you know, over here, it says that in anger, he fashioned a whip and beat the people at the temple. But over here, you have that anger and malice, strife, you know, yeah, is works works of the flesh and works of the flesh is sin. The two aren't one. They don't they don't fit in that puzzle. So. Um, you know, I agree. I certainly agree. And I agree more uh, in that area. Uh, like for instance, Jerry Sandusky allegedly, well, he was convicted of it. So I guess we can say he did it, you know, molested these boys and stuff, you know, and then some people, people would say, well, that should make us very angry that he did that, you know? And, uh, yeah, I am angry when a, a person, a child is uh, molested and stuff. Um, and it, that is a social injustice, that's for sure. Right. Um, you know, I, I can't say that. I, I am, I do get angry when um, the the weak person is being, you know, taken advantage of and stuff. But I wonder... If in my anger, have I ever really done something about it? You know, what I'm trying to say is if I come at it not with anger, will I respond differently? Uh, And if I come with it out of an abundance of love and concern for the person it being offended to, you know, bearing the offense, you know, if I come at that person being um, molested with love and concern, I think I will do something about that right. Instead social of just being injustice. angry at the person who did it. That's right. That's what I'm trying to say. If I just get angry at the person doing, perpetu- you know, perpetrating the the evil, I don't think I'm going to respond as often as if I go over there to the victim and I put all my emotion and say, I want to help and I've got compassion and concern and love for the victim. I believe I'm going to be more spark to respond. Right. And And I wonder, do we really have to... Does it have to be a, an an angered reaction that we have to have to these situations? I mean, can we not look at it and say, you know, that is truly wrong. You know, that bothers me on so many levels because the person who did it, you know, probably was a victim themselves at one sure. point in time. I believe that. You know, Most the, the person that they've hurt is going to have lifelong issues, not to mention their families. Um the people that this person, um, his fa- own family, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the people he w- worked with. I mean, there's just so many different things. But really, is anger the answer? I mean, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is the proper um, thing to feel anger? I mean, and if you don't feel anger, should, should you be labeled as indifferent? I, right. I think that... Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I understand what she's saying, I that it should too. bother you. You should, should be bothered yes. by this. Sure. But I, I'm not sure that it has to be anger. I mean, I just, right. I, and, and I'm not an expert here, Michelle. I, I see your point that, you know, these things shouldn't be something that you just can read and it doesn't affect you. But I'm not sure anger's right. 
yeah. where we need to go. Something to think about for sure. And I, I don't think the fact of not letting it anger you makes you indifferent to it either. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, we're all out of time and I want to thank everybody for tuning in and absolutely positively tune in the rest of the day, three o'clock. Like I said, for our Spanish speaking audiences, um, William Torres also at four o'clock, Joey and Matt, they are super, super funny. And, uh, they're supposed to dress up for Halloween. I don't know if they are I'll Be here for T bog, the beginnings of greatness at four, Amen. five o'clock. We have our new covenant group from Texas, um, Daryl and Tina furlough and, uh, Stephen and Nicole. And, uh, I, we always get, you know, such a blessing out of that six o'clock, Greg Bray and Bob Graves, seven o'clock is Bob Graves. And then from eight to 10 will be, uh, myself and Dr. Jones. And we just look forward to spend the day with you and keep the comments coming. We love them. And, um, you know, something to think about. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
gets beaten up for our sins, and that really takes care of my sins, right? I don't have any problems any longer because Jesus bled and He died. He was beaten beyond recognition. My problems are gone. Can you imagine medical science saying, you know, your, your gallbladder is acting up. Uh, we probably need to beat somebody so you can be healed. What if someone went into heart surgery and they had other physicians in the other room beating someone up? Oh, you know, we're going to beat somebody and place stripes on them so this person can have a better heart. This is the amazing thing about Jesus. Before they ever hit him, he was healing people. The purpose of that was to say this healing theology of the Old Testament, it's not true. I don't have to get beat up to heal you. I don't have to bleed to heal you. I, I'm helping you. I'm loving you now. You don't have to do that. The only thing that I did in my death was to prove that you were so evil and I was so good. You're so evil that you would beat up and kill a good man and I was, I was actually God and I still am God and you didn't get it. That's how evil you were. And Jesus comes 2,000 years ago to say, I'm a good man and your theology beats me up and kills me. And so historic Christianity really has to be called into question for many reasons. But for this reason, it certainly does. And for all the reasons that it killed all those who actually asked these tough questions. They would simply censor them by taking their heads off. They called the taking of the heads off of people called heretics, they called that mercy. The ones who did not receive mercy, they didn't get their heads taken off. They would simply burn those people. So if you had a theological question, historical Christianity simply would take your head off or burn you at the stake. I, I don't applaud things like that. I don't applaud their theology, I don't applaud their methods, I don't applaud their practices, I don't applaud their mindset, their philosophy is evil because good men have not stood up. Good women have not stood up and done something. It's going to take people standing up and saying, I'm going to be good today. I'm not waiting for another tomorrow. I'm not going to allow historical Christianity, which is basically historical Judaism, which is actually historical paganism. I'm not going to allow the sacrifices and all of these kinds of isms to continue. I want to be good and I want to stand up and proclaim what God has actually said because I have proof it's not just just a hypothetical story that really I don't want to be questioned about. This is why it makes me ill inside when I'm called a pastor. Please don't call me that. That's an insult. You can call me all kinds of names, but pastor is below the belt. Because pastors stand for people who teach things that are not logical, they're not rational, they're not good, they're not even moral, and they're certainly not sane. The reason that we have these canons has to do with pastors. I'm not insulting those people. They've insulted themselves. The theology of the Old Testament portrays a God completely unlike Jesus Christ. And it proved completely useless when it came to recognizing him while he was on this earth.
always near And I think to myself This is enough I hear angels in the voices of my children I feel your presence when I hold them in my arms I see Jesus in the faces all around me This is enough this is it And when my darling's lying close enough to whisper Her words illuminate the darkness in my world And when her heart is wrapped around me like a blanket actually come to set us free from death or did he actually come to set us free from the theology of death a lot of preachers today are standing behind the pulpit 2,000 years ago Jesus Christ came and he jerked us away from death in the grave and now we stand victorious because of what Christ did 2,000 years ago can you say amen I, I guess the question that I'm wrestling with is did God ever lose control of those 
he created? Did Jesus come along 2,000 years ago because God lost us? See, that's, that's a question that needs to be answered within you because people in theology think that we were lost. We were away from God and God was rescuing us back out of the clutches of the evil one. That is the devil. And we were under the grips of the devil and it, it's like a contest. Here I'm God and I'm wrestling with my adversary and I'm, I'm wrestling over an individual who I created, actually my son. What led me to believe that God lost control of his children? It, it might have been a book that looks similar to this one. It might have been a preacher that was preaching on the wages of sin is death. You know, those kinds of people, they had theologies, not just one theology, but multiple kinds of theology concerning death, multiple kinds of theologies concerning grave. So did Jesus come to conquer death in the grave, or did he come to conquer the theology of death in the grave? When God created man, and he said that it was good, and if he is almighty, and if he really is in control, if he actually holds everything together, is there a possibility that he created us to live forever and we messed that up? See, that's what we're taught. Did God create us to die physically? Some people would say, no, that was because of the curse. What do you mean the curse? Well, God placed a curse on humanity because one of his kids sinned. That sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? So which is it? Which one do you believe? Did God punish his kids with death? Or did he create us to die? When and if God created man, did he create him to die and at that point to go see him? Or did he create him to live forever and man messed it up? And sweet Jesus came much later in time to rescue us from death and the grave. I'm simply telling people everywhere, you're going to die. The evidence is there. When you die, you're going to go to be with your father. And Jesus didn't come to make that a reality. He did not come 2,000 years ago to get you into heaven. That's a myth. If Jesus, namely God, would have never stepped into humanity, we would have gone to be with the father. The purpose of Christ's coming wasn't to prove that, oh, I'm going to conquer sin. I'm going to conquer the death issue. You won't have to be afraid of death any longer. It doesn't have clutches on you any longer. That sounds like preaching. That sounds like how we all got deceived into that kind of thinking. My point is, we've got to leave this kind of theology. I mean, it's pitiful, isn't it? When you go back and study the ancients, it wasn't the Jews first who started writing these crazy theologies. Those people called pagans started writing these theologies well before any of the Jews ever started writing anything. The horrible thing is, 